Hello everyone, it's Kainé here and today we're going to be sewing the basic skirt block for this you're going to need one to one and a half yards of plain non-stretch fabric I'm using the lining you're also going to need a seven to eight inch zipper just for a simple closure you're also going to need contrasting thread so that we can see what we're sewing and finally you need a copy of the sewing pattern which you can download from the website it's linked below this is a layered pdf document you can select whatever size you want or you can print out the whole pattern i have traced out the size i'm going to use for this example and finally if you need help there is a link to a video where i'll show you how to print and assemble your pdf patterns so let's start sewing starting with the front piece you're going to cut one piece and place it on the fold so i'm putting the center front on the fold line of my fabric and try to leave enough space around for seam allowance these are naked patterns they don't come with seam allowance so for the sides i recommended an inch or perhaps two centimeters just for the sides so that you have enough room for corrections or modifications and for the hemline and the waistline, half an inch or one centimeter is enough as we're just going to stay stitch. Then you're going to transfer your notches to the stitching line. I'm just marking where the notches are. You're going to do the same thing for your darts. Make sure you mark your dart legs then you're also going to mark the mouth or the peak what do i call it the peak of the dart on both sides so i just use a pin and fold it back and mark it with pencil now that i have everything traced out i'll just pin my layers together then i'm going to jump straight into the back piece Now for the back, I'm drawing a one inch seam allowance along the edge of the fabric. I'm using the folded side. You can use the open side of your fabric, but I'm just trying to conserve space. So I have one inch for the center back line. This is where you're going to put your zipper. The back is two pieces. At the base of the back is also half an inch. So I've aligned it very close to the front piece that I drew first. So same here, I'm putting in my seam allowance at the side. So you have one inch on the side, you have one inch at the center back, you have half an inch at the waist, and you have half an inch at the hem. Then you're going to trace your darts, make sure it touches the stitching line. Same for your notches, mark all the notches, there are about three on the back. Finally, transfer your dart. Same here, I use a pin, I mark it. And once I'm sure everything is traced out, I can proceed with cutting. So here I'm just pinning my layers down. I'm pinning straight down the center back in preparation for sewing. My fabric is very, um, what would I like to say, it's very easy to manipulate, it's not slippery, it sticks to itself, that's why I can move it around without worrying that anything is going to separate, but I did pin it first, but it just makes it easier to turn around when you're cutting, so we have the back, roll it back and do the front. So here I'm just drawing my darts. I make sure I draw it on both sides and I'm separating that back piece since I cut it on the fold so your back should be two separate pieces clip in my notches and that is ready same for the front clip all my notches draw in my dark lines now I'm drawing my darts because that makes it more accurate when you're sewing them so you can pin them perfectly together. Now we're going to start with the sewing. We're just going to sew along the center back line first. 
then we will insert the zipper at the waistline you remember there is a seam allowance so you're going to start from the seam allowance down to the notch which is about seven to eight inches i think then we'll do the darts so i'm starting with the center back seam here now i've been saying one inch or two centimeters i'm well aware that one inch is actually 2.54 centimeters but if you're sewing in metric it's easy to just do two centimeters or one centimeter and if you're in imperial you can just do one inch or half an inch so that's why i'm using that conversion right so after sewing the center back i'm just going to finger press the seam open and lay my zipper face down so the right side is facing down start the zipper pull just below the stitching line and then i'm trying to center it and pin it in place now this zipper doesn't have to be pretty i'm just going to sew it the really quick and dirty method so you sew down get to the notch pivot and turn around now the only mistake I did make here was when I got to the zipper pull, I should have pulled it out of the way because it did make my stitch bend to the side a bit as you can see. But I had to go back and do that little error back so that I made it straight. Right. So at this point, you're just going to open up your zipper. Just take your... We are going to open it up. I literally forgot what it's called. That is so weird. Anyway, seam ripper. Thank you. <laughs> so you take your seam ripper. My brain literally just went off at that moment. And remove your seams and you're ready. So now we are doing the darts. Simple thing with the darts. You pinch the two notches together to fold it. Pin through the lines you drew. Pin right at the peak so you know where to stop. And I'm going to put like one or two more pins through the darts. And I'm always making sure it comes out of my ruler line on both sides. So this is a batching method. Everybody does this, but basically you try and do as many things as you can on your cutting table. Put pin all your darts in place, tack anything in place, baste anything. You know, you prepare as many things as possible before you get to your sewing machine so you're not spending so much time sitting at your sewing machine so here i'm just doing all the darts i've done the back this is the front Okay, we are done. So now we're going to sew the darts and when we're done, we're going to join the two big pieces on the sides. Sewing the darts, you just go from the widest point to the narrowest point and you sew straight off the fabric, flip to the other side, repeat, start from the widest point of the dart, now sew in a straight line following your pencil line or chalk line and just sew straight back, straight out. Do not back tack or back stitch or anything, you because you'll make your dart very lumpy. Now I'm doing the sides. There are two notches on the sides. Pin all that in place. Okay, now we are sewing. And this just joins the skirt together. So you're pretty much done at this point. You see, it's very simple. After you're done sewing, you're just going to take it to your ironing table 
and give it a good press. Now I'm pressing my darts to the sides. Some people press it to the middle. To be honest, this is not something I worry about for a basic block. And I simply press it in the direction that I drafted it so it lays smooth and that's that. So press everything, press your seams open to get them flat and have your work looking tidy. When you're done pressing, we are going to stay stitch the waistline and the hemline. Now you see I've done the stay stitch at the waistline, I did at the hemline. And you can just fold it over and press again with your iron. You don't have to sew it down or anything. You're folding it in just so you can actually see where your real waistline starts from. And that is the skirt. It's very simple. We are done. Now let's move on to making quick adjustments if you wanted to do so before sewing this skirt. Making adjustments. First, you can blend between sizes. For example, if your waist is an 18 and your hip perhaps is a 20, you can simply take a curved ruler and join from point 18 to point 20. Keep the line shallow and blend. You have to do the same for the back. Go from the waist of the 18 to the hip of the 20. Keep the line shallow and blend and then you continue all the way down to the hemline following the 20 line and stop on size 18 which is your original size so i would simply extend the 18 hemline to the 20 line so that you just continue do the same for the back now for in between sizes, which means if your waist is not a 24, 26 or 28 or 30, maybe you're in the middle, maybe my waist is a 33, which is between a size 16 and a size 34, I would simply find the halfway mark between size 16 and size 18. So I'll draw a diagonal, note the halfway mark, and that is my new waist. So what I'll advise is whatever your waist is, to make this easier, round it off to the nearest whole number so that you can easily find the in-between. So you're either going to be a 24 or a 25, 26, 27, 28, and so on. Just keep it at one inch increments. And remember, if you do it on the front, you do it on the back. You can do the same for the hip. Maybe your hip is a 45 inch, which is between 18 and 20. You take your ruler, note down the halfway point, and that becomes your new hip. And in the same fashion, you link your two points together your new waist and your new hip, or your hip and your new waist, it doesn't matter. So once you've marked all your adjustments, you can link them with a curve. You do the same for the front and the back. And in the same vein, if I've made the hip halfway, I will square down a line from this new point. Just square it down because it's a straight cut skirt. Like so. I'm going to draw a straight line from my new point down to my required hem you can do the same for the back so that the sizing makes sense because you're essentially adding or removing an inch next for vertical measurements which is your length starting with there are two points you have the hip depth and you have the general length of the skirt of course if you adjust your hip depth it's going to affect the general length of the skirt so the easiest way to do this is, for instance, I am a size 18 and the hip depth is nine, but I want it to be eight. You're actually just going to put your ruler
you're going to put your ruler at the waist of the 18 and measure down the new hip depth in my case is eight inches i'm going to note down eight inches and then i will square across at that point let's draw a new hip line okay and i will also square up from my sideline just to get to a medium point so if i square up i now have my new hip point there and i will now draw my waist from that new hip point so i will take my waist and match it to the hip point or if it's a 20, I use a 20. If it's an 18, I use an 18. If it's in between, whatever the case, match up my waist to my new hip point and draw. And that's all for adjusting the hip depth, just to keep it simple and you don't have to touch the darts or anything. For the overall length, once you're happy with your hip depth, the overall length has been provided in the key. You only need to go to the base of the skirt. At the base of the skirt, depending on which size you chose, if I'm using an 18, an 18 is 25 inches, maybe I want it to be 25 and a half, I will simply measure from the 25 inch line, that's size 18, put half an inch, and draw i will do the same for the back go from the 18 line pull half an inch and draw so i have just made the skirt longer you can do it the opposite direction i can go from the 18 line measure up half an inch and draw so that you're just not going to waste paper when you do it this way you have time to make all your modifications so this is my new line if I shorten it and draw and you do the same for the front you do the same for the back so that is the simplest way to adjust your skirt of course if you are not comfortable making adjustments simply pick the size that is nearest to your natural body measurements and cut and better yet if you're really not sure if you find yourself between two sizes, maybe I have a, an 18 waist and a 20 hip or vice versa or something like that, I will simply cut out the bigger size because it's easier to shrink something down when you're sewing than to make it bigger. So I hope this helps. Thank you for watching. I'm Kaine. I make pattern drafting videos. You can see more tutorials on the website. Feel free to ask questions or leave me comments. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.